In our Alumni in Your Community segment this month, we talked to a couple who both chose to attend BCC after already beginning their professional careers. Hi, I'm Richard Sperlett, uh, graduate of class of 1977. Hi, and I'm Lois Sprawlett, um, and I'm the class of 1980. Dick and I both grew up in New Bedford, and uh, when I went into nursing school, uh, my parents didn't let me go too far. Those were the days you couldn't, so I chose Union Hospital School of Nursing. After graduation, uh, Dick and I got married in uh, the early 60s, and we had a family. And uh, at that time, uh, I was working part-time at uh, what was then Union Hospital and now is Charlton Memorial Hospital. It got to be, after we had three children, and it got to be into the 70s, um, the hospitals were encouraging nurses to go back to school, mainly because BCC had taken over the two-year program of nursing of the three hospitals in the area, be it St. Anne's and Truesdale and Union. Um, so we were competing for positions within the hospital even though we had um, exposure as experiences with individuals who probably might be younger than ourselves uh, but had degrees. I had discussed it with Dick because he was going to school too and we thought, oh my goodness, here we are both in college at the same time. Uh, but it worked out well for me because um, I was doing the night shift and as Dick had related to the uh, policemen and firemen were going back to school and so BCC was very accommodating to get the basics under your belt. Once I got out of high school, I, uh, I went to college for one year, and then after that I started working uh, in various jobs, still kept working in uh, family business. And then what I ended up doing is uh, joining the police department. That's something, a vocation I really enjoyed, helping people, being out there. It was changing every day. It wasn't mundane going to work and I was doing the same thing. You never knew what was going to happen. Every day was always a new, uh, a new adventure. A lot of grants were coming down that were paying for officers to go to school, whether it would be the Quinn Bill, whether it would be uh, uh, COPS was a different type of program for education. LEAPS was one of law enforcement assistant program and that was very active in the early 70s. So I took advantage of that and I figured that was the future. And one thing about BCC, they really uh, got on board. You have to realize the police department is a 24-7 organization. You had guys working three, three shifts in a sense. You know, we had the day group, we had the evening group, and the night uh, guys working the midnight shift. Uh, they made themselves available to try and uh, capture all these uh, offices that were to work in these crazy shifts. And they made courses available uh, in the morning, in the afternoon, or in the evening. So they got out of their way uh, for these individuals. And subsequently, uh, I graduated in 1978 from Salvador Regina with a bachelor's in criminal justice. Uh, they also were uh, one of the few uh, uh, colleges offering a, a bachelor's degree in this area. I just kept going and at that point Anna Maria College put a, uh, a satellite uh, a campus in Middleborough and it drew all from the Cape and all this area. That was one of the colleges that offered a master's degree. So I continued on there and subsequently in 1981 I received a master's degree from Anna Maria College. When I first graduated I worked in the OR for a couple of years. Uh, when we had children and I had to be on call in the OR, I had to reevaluate that and went as night supervisor. Then I went into the intensive care unit and worked the cardiac unit uh, for quite a few years. And then after that, um, I was offered a position in the education department, mainly because at that point in time, now I had a bachelor's degree. So I was able to deal with orientation, keeping the nurses up to date on any new systems that were coming in the hospital, whether it be computers or whatever. And at that point, I decided, well, maybe I should go back to school again, so I went to the University of Rhode Island. I ended up becoming the Director of Professional Development um, at Charlton Memorial, where I was in charge of probably seven or eight clinicians and five clinical specialists. In 1996, <laughs> uh, 97, uh, the hospital was discussing merging. The three hospitals were merging. So at that point, um, my mentorship, I was with Aura de Jesus, who was really into gerontology before it was fashionable. And she was my mentor for my grad program. And she called me up and she said to me, you know, you need to look at possibly assisted living. That's going to be the fashionable thing for elders in the future. 
and she knew that the hospital at that point in time was looking at land between the two big hospitals to build the first assisted living in the, in the area, South Coast area. And I applied for the position, got that, and have been here since 1997 when it opened. I started off as a, uh, everybody does, I started off in uniform patrol uh, in 1976. I started the first uh, canine unit in the city of New Bedford. We never had canines. I went before the city council. They made a proposal that I think a city this size has a need for a canine unit. They accepted that. The yeah, police department ended up with four uh, canine dogs over the years. That's still going. It's still evolved. So from there, I ended up uh, going to the narcotics unit. Uh, I was a I made sergeant. I stayed on there as a sergeant, also maintained with the dog and drug dog, and worked my way through uh, uh, the, the narcotics unit. At some point, I started with, the, I was one of the implementers of the community policing in the city of New Bedford. We started in 1993. Uh, we won in 1994. I think it was 1994, the Robert Trojanowicz Memorial Award. Robert Trojanowicz was an uh, innovator in community policing, and we won the first award because we were so diverse, dynamic, and what we implemented in our community that we won that national award. In 2000, I was offered a position as if I wanted to be the uh, public information officer for the city of New Bedford. And I thought it was a, a, a nice change, in, and, and I, uh, I, I took that assignment. We want, I wanted to get involved with the community, and I ended up uh, working on what they call Behind the Badge. It was a TV uh, show that was uh, sponsored uh, by uh, New Bedford Cable Access. Uh, we did numerous segments, probably over 25 segments of that. It was a, it was a half hour show that ran for for a month on TV, uh, what I would end up doing is I basically dissected the police department. Now that I'm retired, when I took a little bit of time off, I, I joined a, uh, a golf course and uh, played some golf. Then I was uh, approached by uh, one of the other community colleges, uh, not a community college, a local college, and wanted to know if I wanted to do some teaching, uh, which I, I, I did. Uh, so I'm, I'm an adjunct instructor. And I also uh, was asked if I wanted to do a radio talk show for uh, WBSM. Uh, radio talk show, and uh, I did that, and I'm still doing that, a uh, Sunday morning talk show. Sunday mornings with Dick Sperlap, so it's, uh, it's enjoyable. BCC attracts individuals such as Dick and I, not that it doesn't the younger person, but also it allows them to be in the workforce and stay local. You shouldn't look at it as, oh, it's the college in the backyard of where I went to school, like New Bedford High School. And I think my daughter found that out when she went back to BCC, that it gave her a great foundation to move on. Would I recommend it? Most definitely. If it was to do over again, I would do the same thing all over again. It, it just gives you, the, it builds up the confidence, and that's what you need to get you going, especially if you've been out of school for a while. And they can't say enough art. And again, they adapt the plans. And not only that, I know they're, now they're even doing online teaching and stuff. So they are with the future. And, uh, and it's a beautiful campus and just uh, a well-kept, uh, well uh, the property's well-kept and uh, the education, they can't say enough art.